Hello friends, in this video I will show you a new version of the GPS tracker I designed for a client in Europe. I got this requirement when I was designing my Valtrack V2 GPS tracker. A transport company wanted to track their concrete walls which they transport all over the country and beyond. These concrete walls are loose equipment and are switched from one truck to another so they needed to track the wall itself instead of the truck. They were already using a 3G based GPS tracker which was a Quectual UC15 based 3G GPS tracker but they didn't want to use this tracker because it was expensive and had too many features which were not necessary. So they wanted to a simpler device which can run off a battery on its own uh, for a long period of the shipment like one year. They wanted to track these walls once in a day uh, so one ping with location coordinates was enough for the application. So challenge was to keep the device running for one year and wake it up every day at a particular time and send the location after getting the GPS fix and turn off all the peripherals like GSM, GPS and uh, all the chips and make the microcontroller go into deep sleep to conserve power. Fortunately, the Wildtrack V2 GPS tracker which I had already designed had all the features which were necessary for this application. So what I did was I ripped off the parts which were not needed for the application. Like in the Wildtrack V2 I had this accelerometer, I removed this, I removed the EEPROM uh, and we also removed the battery charger which was not needed and, and there were some extra transistors and MOSFETs which were added for the IO connections. Those things were also removed. So, so this is how the board looks like. Uh, it is the same Wildtrack V2 GPS tracker with uh, most of the things removed and the uh, only uh, change is that the SIM card connector which you have used is for a bigger SIM card and the antenna has been changed to an SMA connector. We also provided the option to connect a small wire antenna which is uh, very inexpensive and will keep the cost slow. Also one more minor change was that the microcontroller used was changed to a uh, different version uh, compared to the Wildtrack V2. And one more important addition was the addition of a battery fuel gauge. This battery fuel gauge will give us the battery capacity left uh, and the current that is being consumed by the device at this moment. So this fuel gauge can be read by the microcontroller through the I2C interface. So as usual there is the USB connector for debugging and uh, there is a GST connector added for the battery input. This is the current sense resistor which is used by this battery fuel gauge to measure the current that is being consumed by the device. So we also reduced the board layer size to two layers instead of four layers to keep the cost low. So what we did is we uh, quickly respin the board and got a new prototype done and since the firmware for Waltrack V2 was already there uh, we were able to get it up and running in no time. The firmware was written to wake up the device uh, when the RTC alarm occurred daily at 9 am and the GSM and GPS model were switched on and once the location fix was achieved by the GPS, the location was sent in the form of an SMS to a server. This server is an SMS gateway, it can collect incoming SMS and save to a database. We chose SMS as the transport mechanism because we were not using much more data and, uh, and recharging a monthly data pack uh, or a data credit didn't make sense. So the device sends logs to an uh, SMS gateway which is uh, collected in a table and for the network we choose the Tele2 SIM card which is having a better coverage in Europe. Uh, the device was commissioned for testing in September and it is running fine so far. We have used this uh, large batteries uh, for the application. Uh, these are uh, like 1S6P uh, batteries uh, which are around 14,000 mAh capacity. So here are the test results and uh, they are quite impressive. The device seems to be conserving power very well and for 4 months the device battery voltage has dropped by only 0.05 volts. As you can see the uh, battery voltage started at 4175 when we started it in September and uh, in December the battery voltage has only dropped to 4125. This the, the voltage is in millivolts means the battery uh, voltage is uh, voltage was 4.175 volts in uh, uh, in in September and the voltage is now 4.125 volts. So that's a very negligible drop and this assures that the device can easily run for a year and probably more. So that's what I wanted to share with you guys this week. If you have any questions go to embeddedadvice.com and post your queries there. I will make sure to answer them. And if you like this video hit the like button, share with your friends and subscribe to my channel for more such content. Thank you for watching.